Welcome Spry Science student. This is a review video for the scientific method quiz. We're going to go from beginning to end to the scientific method and talk about key terms and key concepts that you need for them to know for the upcoming quiz. Let's start off right at the beginning with an observation. When you notice your surroundings using your five senses or any combination of those senses, that's called observing. You're noticing something. Um, you can observe the color of a plant. You can observe the um, shading um, on an object. These are using your sense of sight, uh, but you can use any of your other four senses as well as long as appropriate. When you notice things about your environment, when you observe them, this causes you to have questions pop into your head. So the second step of the scientific method is the question or the problem. Um, there's two ways to phrase this. You can phrase this using the simple two blank method where you have the variable and the test subject. For example, you could say, what are the effects of fertilizer on bean plants? Or to have a better question, you can phrase it, including the data that you're going to collect. You could say, what are the effects of fertilizer on the height of bean plants? That's going to be a better question because not only does it tell you what you want to test, but it also tells you what kind of data you're looking for at the end. That first item, the fertilizer, the thing you want to test is your independent variable. Your independent variable starts with an I. That's the part that I want to test, what I want to know about. The... Uh, the data, data starts with a D, that's your dependent variable. In this case, the height of the plants. And the test subject, the thing you're testing it on, that's the, the bean plants. So now that you have your question, what are the effects of fertilizer on the height of bean plants? You can go ahead and do some research. Um, using those uh, various resources, you can get a general idea of what you think the answer might be. You now have an educated guess, and you can write up a hypothesis using the if, then, because statements that we learned about. After the word if would come your experiment. So I could say if I water 15 bean plants with regular water and I water another 15 bean plants with fertilizer water, then, so after the word then, you're going to say what your prediction is. What do you think is going to happen? So I could say then the bean plants with fertilizer will be taller. Then comes the word because. After the word because, you're going to give your reasoning. Why do you think your prediction is going to be true. And you're going to want to base this on your research that you did. So I could say, if we put it all together now, we could say, if 15 bean plants are watered with regular water and 15 bean plants are watered with fertilizer water, then the fertilized plants will grow taller because most fertilizers contain gibberellic acid, which is an ingredient in miracle Grow. So there you go. There's a, a good hypothesis with an if, then, and because. And the because is based on some research you did um, on that topic. The next step is to test your hypothesis and see if it's right. So you would set up a proper experiment. Remember in class, we had our experiment planner where we took our question and then we found what the independent variable was. And we used that to split our experiment into two halves. Uh, one half of the experiment was the boring half that did not involve the variable we were testing, and the other half was the more exciting side of the experiment where we were testing um, our, our variable. So the boring side is what we call the control side. We're doing this just so we have something to compare the other half of our experiment to. These are the normal conditions. So these would be 15 bean plants um, just being watered every day with regular water. On the other side, we've got our bean plants with fertilizer. This would be our experimental group. This one has the independent variable being applied to the plant, the fertilizer. So we would grow our 15 plants, same pot, same soil, same sunshine, same temperature, same uh, bean plant species. Everything would be the same. Those are what we call our constants. A constant is something that stays the same in our experiment between the experimental side and the control side. The only difference between the experimental side and the control group should be your independent variable. Remember, independent starts with I. I'm testing fertilizer in this experiment. I want to know what fertilizer does to bean plants. So we run through our experiment through the uh, 15 plants um, for a certain amount of time, same amount of time for control group and experimental group, and at the end, we measure the height of our plants. That's our dependent variable. It's our data. We want to know numbers. We want to know heights of plants, and then we can average them together and get some numbers. So let's say in this case, our plants in our control group grow to be 8 inches tall on average. And 
and the experimental group with the fertilizer grows to be 11 inches tall on average. So that's our dependent variable. Those are our results. The dependent variable depends on what happened in the experiment. In this case, our dependent variable is the height of the plant. So in this case, we can, as we look at these numbers, that's the next step of the scientific method. We're analyzing our results. We're looking at our numbers to see were we right or were we wrong. And in this case, if you look at the 8 and the 11, the 8 for the control, the 11 for the experimental group, we were right. So we can write a conclusion now. That's the next step of the scientific method. In our conclusion, we would say our question, our hypothesis. In this case, we would say we were right. And then we would say why we were right. And we wouldn't talk about all the individual heights of all the plants. Instead, we would focus on the main numbers, the average of each, um, the control group and the experimental group. So we could say a sentence in there like, um, the hypo hypothesis was correct because the plants in the control group with regular water grew to an average of 8 inches, while the plants in the experimental group with fertilizer water grew to an average of 11 inches. So that would be a good sentence to have in your um, conclusion. You would also talk about improvements. So you could talk about ways of keeping your constants the same. You could talk about having more trials, things like that that would make your experiment better. Um, once you've made your conclusion, you write it up in the form of a lab report, and, uh, and that's your last step of the scientific method. Um, obviously, when you do this experiment, new questions would pop in your head as you make observations of your data. And that could lead to the, the scientific method repeating itself over and over and over again as you constantly make new observations and stumble upon new questions. And that's what science is all about. So the key things you need to remember here is that the independent and dependent variables, um, I for independent, I'm testing this variable. The dependent, D for data, this is, these are the results of the variable. Um, the control group is the boring side of the experiment without the independent variable. And the experimental group, is the side of the experiment that's more exciting because that's where you're actually doing the experimenting. You're, you're taking the variable and testing it. Uh, so that's it for this review video. Please feel free to rewind, pause as you need, add to your cards, look through your notebook, and good luck on the upcoming quiz.